This is an ad for Jurassic World. Can we go swimming outside, Mommy? Please, it's so hot outside. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. The cover on the swimming pool is broken right now. We won't be able to open it. I do have something really fun that we can do inside, though. Yes! What is it? It's the Smithsonian Prehistoric Projector. And I got this at Target. Whoa, oh my God, that's so cool. I know the perfect place to set this up. Let's go get started. Prehistoric projector brings dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures into our room. I have disc one, which is Jurassic World dinosaurs. I can't wait to see those. Come put it in the projector, Lizzie. I also found this awesome compartment where we can store the other two discs. to see the image properly. According to this prehistoric poster, there are some awesome facts about the Pyroraptor. First of all, Pyroraptor, 71 million years ago, late Cretaceous time period, like its cousin Velociraptor, Pyroraptor was a dinosaur covered in feathers and had a large toe claw for grappling with prey. Wow, Lizzie, those are some interesting facts. I love that all of these facts about dinosaurs comes with the projector. Let's look at more dinosaurs. It's a Quetzalcoatlus! Whoa, the Quetzalcoatlus lived about 67 million years ago. The Apatosaurus is the oldest dinosaur on disc one, living about 152 million years ago. Let's change to disc two. Okay. Were those plants here before? Yeah, I think so. Hey, while you're back there, will you turn off the lights? Yeah, sure. Which dinosaur should we learn about next? Whoa, this doesn't just tell facts. This actually says what's happening in the picture. For example, a herd of Diplodocus is searching for vegetation for food. Guys, is it just me or are more plants appearing? I don't know, Canyon, but let's go to the Aviosaurus Trudon. Oh, well, okay. Fun facts are, they lived 77 million years ago. They're both related to raptors and very closely related to birds. Wait, let's switch to disc three. Good idea. from the Smithsonian, and you get to ask all of your dinosaur questions. It's so nice to meet you guys. My name is Dr. Jack Lungmus. I'm a vertebrate paleontologist at the Smithsonian, which is the National Museum of Natural History, located in Washington, DC. Uh, it's the National Museum of the United States. What kind of things do you do in the Smithsonian? So I'm a researcher here, which means I get to do science and try to answer questions that I think are interesting about ancient animals. I also get to participate in things like fossil digs. So I've actually gotten to go look for dinosaurs in places like Montana and North Dakota. I've also done work in the Southwest, like in Arizona, things like that. Gotten to dig up, look for dinosaurs myself before. Um, and then I also get to travel around the world going to museums to look at all the dinosaurs and animals that other museums have in their collections. I've been to China and South America and Africa a bunch of times. so. 
it's really fun. I so badly want to travel around the world and dig up fossils around the world. That would be that so, would so, so fun. fun. Yeah. I found a lot of fossils before, like a piece of a trilobite. Trilobite. And, yeah. and I found the imprint of a shell. Most of these ah. are imprints, except Most the Easter one. So do you know what those are called when they're imprints? So like the feathers or the imprint of a shell, they're called a trace fossil. And that's because it's not the actual animal itself, it's the trace that the animal left behind. That's, that's pretty cool. cool. How big can a dinosaur get? So it was the sauropod dinosaurs that were the largest dinosaurs. And they were actually some of the biggest dinosaurs, some of the biggest animals that ever lived on the planet. <laughs> So there was a dinosaur called Patago Titan, which was found in South America. And it's thought to be one of the largest, if not the largest animal or dinosaur ever, I should say. It's estimated to have been like 130 feet long. So that's like three school buses lined up back to back. In three school buses? And it had this big long neck that got so high, it could see over a two story house easily. Oh, I wanna go next. How long did dinosaurs live on the earth? So dinosaurs first appeared in a time period that's called the Triassic. They likely kind of first emerged around 240 million years ago. That's 240? That's long that time is ago. so long ago. And then they lived all the way to the end of a period called the Cretaceous period, which ended 66 million years ago. Oh, wow. So that's around 175 million years the dinosaurs. 175 oh, million years? Whoa. That's that How many species of herbivores do you think there were? So this is a difficult question because it's sometimes really hard to know how dinosaurs like lived their lives and what they did for a living and what types of things they ate. But mm -hmm. what I can say is that we know that there's close to a thousand species of dinosaur that we've currently discovered. And I can't say that the majority of those were herbivores. There was many, many more plant-eating dinosaurs than meat-eating dinosaurs. How many teeth did the T-Rex have? So a Tyrannosaurus rex probably had around 60 teeth in its mouth at any one time. What's the lifespan of a T-Rex? We doubt that T-Rexes would have lived longer than 30 years. That's pretty long for a lot of animals. It's obviously not long for, for us, not long for some birds, but you know, it's a lot longer than, a, than your dog. It's a lot longer than small other small mammals. We tell that in part by actually cutting open their fossil bones. So we take a, a saw, we cut the bones in half, and then you can look at the inside of the bones under a microscope. And what's really cool is that as animals grow, this is true of all animals, they kind of lay down little rings, like how tree rings are laid down. And you can kind of use that to get an idea of how old the dinosaurs were. And so we use this, we can kind of look at baby T-Rexes, then we can look at our oldest T-Rexes, our most mature T-Rexes. Um, we think the oldest T-Rex is actually the T-Rex that's at the Field Museum right now, the T-Rex that they call Sue. Um, we think that that dinosaur was probably 28 to 30 years old, is sort of what we estimate. That is so cool. That's the cool. most oh, really cool. thing and it just ever heard about a T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite dinosaur, Jack? So my favorite dinosaur is called Acrocanthosaurus. It's found in Oklahoma, in the middle of the US, and it kind of looks like a T-Rex but it is more distantly related. The thing that's cool about them is they're actually a separate group of theropods. And you know how T-Rex is famous because it had its short little arms and its two fingers? So these guys also had short arms, but they had three fingers. They had one more finger than T-Rex. But they also were really big, nice, like meat-eating dinosaurs um, that would run around in what is modern day Oklahoma. Does it have like little horns like that one? No, so that behind you is a Carnotaurus. Those guys, they had little horns, but they're one of the only ones I can think of. We have dinosaurs that had frills. Um, you know, then we had plant eating dinosaurs that had horns um, like duck bills and like triceratops and things like that. But not that many meat eating dinosaurs had little horns. Guys, this was so awesome. Jack, thank you so much.
And thank you to the Smithsonian for letting us have this interview. I think we learned some awesome things today. Yes. Yeah. It was A so lot of awesome things. Bye, Bye Jack. Jack. You. How was that, you guys? That was so awesome. She had all the answers. Yeah. yeah. That was the coolest thing ever. I can't wait to be an animal scientist. I can't wait to be a paleontologist. And I can't wait to see the new Jurassic World Dominion movie and see more dinosaurs. And thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Hold the smash that subscribe button.